Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, you are listening to the most electrifying podcast in all of internet radio today. You are listening to the Sports Wire. My name is Vinny Apicella, and in a little bit, we're going to get uh, to you a special guest coming on the Sports Wire with me. That is Bubba Collins from the Memory Lane Podcast. I don't know why I always keep saying memory. It's Memory Lane Podcast, and you can find that wherever you find your favorite podcasts as well. Uh, we're going to go over WWE news, WrestleMania news, and just a bunch of other stuff. As you can tell, with the uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic, and the, uh, I guess the CDC or the World Health Organization has changed the term to now physical distancing, because social distancing, we're not really socially distant because there's all kinds of telephone calls and video chats and, you know, Skype and Zoom and everything. We're able to be socially together and, and, and socialized, just can't be physically together. So they've changed the term to physical uh, isolation and physical distancing. So with all that in place, obviously we can still record podcasts uh, via, uh, I, I'm doing it via Anchor, uh, but... You could do it via Zoom or, or Skype or what have you. Uh, but it's going to be a good uh, episode. We're going to, like I said, we're going to be going over WrestleMania, going over some uh, some uh, back WrestleMania. You know, like uh, we'll go over some like top five matches possibly or or something like that. Just some of the greatest matches in WrestleMania history, and uh, we'll just take it from there. There might be some talk about the coronavirus and how it's affecting. Uh, all of sports, not just uh, WWE, AEW, professional wrestling, but all of sports. As we just heard, the Wimbledon uh, tennis tournament is uh, has been postponed or canceled, I should say, for this year. The Summer Olympics have been postponed from uh, July of 2020 until July of 2021. Uh, so it's wreaking havoc everywhere. Uh, and there's... Uh, no end in sight right now, you know, we're going month by month, you know, you're under physical isolation for a month right now until April 30th, or April 20th, I should say, uh, or no, I think uh, April 30th, but, you know, we're going to just go month by month, and I'm going to keep doing my podcast to kind of give you guys some entertainment, some information, uh, and just keep on reaching out, so uh, in just a minute, I'm going to invite uh, Bubba Collins from the Memory Lane podcast on to the Sports Wire. We'll talk about everything. So, folks, we'll be back. All right. I'd like to welcome Bubba Collins from the Memory Lane podcast on to the Sports Wire. What's going on, man? Hey, Vinny. What's going on, man? It's a pleasure. Uh, first and foremost, happy Wednesday, and I, I can't thank you enough for having me on. Oh, absolutely. No, I'm happy to have you. Uh, happy April Fool's Day, although this <laughs> is not a really good day for April Fool's jokes. Hey, I actually, you know, when you asked me to be on here I, and, and then you push it back to Wednesday, I honestly thought this was a joke and we weren't going to make this happen. <laughs> so is, is this actually recording? Are we, are we live? Like, is we, this for real? Yeah, we're recording. It's not live, but it'll be on tape delay. I'll uh, post it as soon as uh, we're done talking and the episode's over. But uh, absolutely, we are recording. I love it. I love it, man. Well, uh, first and foremost, how's everything going? How have you been? Hey, things have been going good. You know, uh, doing the physical distancing, physical isolation. Uh, Apparently, uh, the CDC has changed the term. It's no longer social isolation. It's physical isolation because uh we're still able to socialize via zoom and skype and telephones and everything so they've decided to change the terminology now can you imagine that you know just a couple days in and people are already getting offended over you know (laughs) the the wording you know people get offended over everything nowadays it's it's absolutely crazy man but uh so how's the i mean this COVID 19 has has wreaked havoc on uh, every aspect of of society. I mean, this is in our generation, in our mm. lifetime. This is the absolute worst thing we've seen, where it's affected everything. Yeah, and uh, you know, a little bit of background on on my side is 
I, I work in uh, in college athletics uh, right now. So I, I work over at a Division One school for all the listeners out there at uh, Central Connecticut State University. And uh, as, as we all have taken notice, sports as a whole has taken a step back. Uh, obviously, the entire world has taken a step back, but um, – Vinny, uh, you know, I, I know you're a big time sports fan. I am myself. It's odd. It Putting is. on ESPN and, you know, we, we can talk this a, a little bit later, but I, I thought I'd never see it in my life where they have reruns of WrestleMania on you're ESPN. Right. <laughs> like, that you know, is you're the right. day we're living in right now. I mean, the last time that a pro wrestling event was featured on ESPN was – the Global Wrestling Federation in the early 90s. So for them, you know, about 30 years later to be showing WrestleMania events, which actually this coming Sunday before night two of WrestleMania 36, they'll be showing WrestleMania 35 on ESPN at 3 p.m. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It, I never thought, and you know what? I was listening to Steve Austin's podcast earlier today. Yep. BetOnline.ag. You know, they're, they're big with the bookies and everything. And obviously with those sports, there's nothing going on. They are, they're actually uh, – people are betting table tennis now from Russia or Czechoslovakia or something. So it's, it's uh, wreaked havoc. You know what, Vinny? And this is what I'm thinking about with ESPN being right around the corner. It's, it's actually about a mile away from my, my new place out here in Plainville. Mm-hmm. We might have to record ourselves playing uh, virtual chess – Send that over and, and see if uh, they'll air it on the content or not. Yeah, you're not kidding. <laughs> we, could, we definitely could be on to something. I actually – so going back to WrestleMania 35 that they're going to be airing, I was there. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So that, that was my first ever WrestleMania and uh, had the opportunity. It's like something yeah, – it's the grandest stage of them all. Grand, Absolutely. Grandest stage of them all. And, and I had the opportunity to go with uh, a couple buddies I played college football with and, and worked with. And we had so much fun. I could not talk. My voice was gone. Uh, yeah. I, I want to say for about five or six days. Nonstop. Could not oh, talk. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can imagine. the Just, I mean, even watching it on uh, the WWE Network last year, in my opinion, I think it was one of the best WrestleManias in recent history. Mm. Uh, you know, it was long. I mean, it was about seven and a half hours long. Oh, yeah. With the, uh, you know, with the pre-show and, you know, ending at like 1230 in the morning. And it was raining. And I know that, it was raining at yeah, the end. It was raining. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that the uh, New Jersey Transportation Department wasn't, uh, they weren't prepared for the amount of people needing, you know, buses or, or trains out of MetLife. And people were, were, th- were there for a long time afterwards, I heard. Stranded. Stranded. So imagine you leaving uh, MetLife Stadium. I think it holds 70,000, 80,000 people. Um, and then it was around right after, as soon as Becky Lynch put her hand up and all the, the fireworks went off, uh, mm-hmm. then the rain started coming. And it started coming yeah. hard. So, like, they, they timed it, I guess, perfectly, if you want to put it in there. But I have one of my close friends. He was uh, – he, he's a big, big fellow. He's about 6'9", mm-hmm. uh, about 450. <laughs> and he was, and he was yeah. standing outside of the rain, and he, he was not happy for, for about three or four hours. <laughs> right. Just an insanity. But that's how big WrestleMania has gotten. I mean – Looking at the Genesis back in uh, 1985, or yeah, and uh, you know, from Madison Square Garden, you had Hulk Hogan, Roddy Piper, or, or Hulk Hogan, and Mr. T against Roddy Piper and Paul Orndorff, uh, to what it's grown into. Uh, you know, you had the early 90s, you know, wrestling, which weren't that great. I mean, the early 90s was a, was a s- slow time in wrestling, anyways. But after, I want to say the turning point was. 2001, when WWE bought WCW mm. and X7 in Houston, in my opinion, has got to be one of the best WrestleManias of all time. Uh, and that was a turning point because then after that, other than WrestleMania 20, they were doing all stadium shows. And I don't, nothing came close. 
to WrestleMania 17. I think from the opening match all the way to the very end, uh, in, in the words of Jim Ross, it, it was a slobber knocker. But, you know, I, mm-hmm. I'm curious, at least on, on my end, Vinny, you know, what was the – how did you get into wrestling? How did you become a, a WWE fan? WWE, was it WWE in the beginning? Like, what, what sparked it all? <laughs> well – Honestly, to be honest with you, it was my grandmother that got me into wrestling. Um, you know, my grandmother while well, used to watch, you know, Saturday Night Wrestling, the WWF, uh, you know, growing up. And I just took a liking to it. I don't know what it was, but when I saw the red and yellow of Hulk Hogan and Hulkamania, uh, it, it hooked me. It was like, you know, and, and, I, and I'll, I'll never forget. I remember it was days long. I got punished when I was a child for doing something <laughs> stupid. And my mother said I couldn't watch wrestling for three weeks. And it was hell. And after that punishment, I was watching Superstars and Challenge on Saturdays and Sundays uh, every week. At that point, uh, primetime wrestling, was, on, was uh, which was a precursor to Monday Night Raw, that was on Monday nights or Tuesday nights. And it was past my bedtime, so I couldn't watch it. But in 93, when Monday Night Raw debuted from the Manhattan Center, uh, I I started watching it. And you know what? I haven't – I can't say I haven't missed an episode, but I've been hooked ever since. Um, during the Monday Night Wars, I had uh, two TVs in my bedroom, two 13-inch TVs, had both Raw and Raw really? on. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, I – I'd uh, change the volume every so often when I saw something I wanted to see. But, yeah, I had uh, both Raw and Nitro playing uh, I'm on each TV. It was uh, – that was a great time. Which leads me, actually, to – how about you? What what brought you uh, into uh, being a wrestling oh, man. fan? Well, well, first and foremost, that's – you, you got a couple more years on the on the wrestling experience than, than <laughs> I do. But yeah, I, I'm catching up there. Uh we're going all the way back, or at least at least for me, uh, it was the mid-night or probably the mid to late 90s. And uh, mm-hmm. luckily enough, the people that were babysitting me at the time while my mom was working, uh, they were horrible influences. And they would always have on they, – they were anti-WWF at the time. Hate, hated it. Oh, wow. So, okay. Uh, I, I was living out in, in Fall River, Massachusetts, and uh, – I remember just one day sitting at the edge of uh, the living room and the very first match I, I ever saw was, uh, was Goldberg versus Booker T on a, on, on a random okay. Monday Nitro. And, and I got hooked, you know, you see these guys yeah. that are, are larger than life, you know, come and And at the time, you know, the, there was three main things going on in the, in the late nineties for wrestling. It was uh, drug sex and rock and roll. And, and they covered yeah. all of them. These guys were, were superstars. And how can you emulate that and entertainment from the Nitro Girls to, to even kid-friendly characters at the time to, to guys like Sting and, and Scott Steiner cutting a promo. Uh, so I was a pro WCW guy at first. And, uh, mm-hmm. and then I, I, it took me almost about a year to find out that they had a rivalry. Uh, with another company, yeah. Oh, wow. So I, I was missing out on the on the WWF for a while, and uh, then it came about around nineteen. I want to say around ninety nine. Uh, I I broke okay. into WWF, and um, one of the very first matches I saw was uh, it was a tag team match with APA, and and I believe they they were up against Rikishi and someone else, and uh, and then I'm like, wow, this is what I'm missing out on. Uh, and then one of my favorites. Uh, soon thereafter gets on board Y2J and, uh, and I got to see him yep. jump ship. I remember watching that live and I I've been hooked ever since. And it, it became actually, uh, wrestling has such an impact on my life growing up, um, from, you know, the people that surrounded me and, uh, helped carve me into the person I am today. But back in high school, um, I actually took, up this guy's word and and i was uh at the time i was a professional wrestler um and i wrestled at a couple local indie shows so i, I call myself professional uh because people paid to come okay. see me and and i was under the the alias yep. the hometown hero so so i wrestled two okay. events 
uh, dropped the bionic elbow off the top rope. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, here we are today, man. You know, shucks, 20-plus years later, who would have thought not only wrestling still kicking around, but uh, now we're kind of, you know, history seems to repeat itself, and we're seeing that mm-hmm. as we speak. It's not there yet, but we got this company, AEW, creeping up, and, um, and it's, right. it's exciting for us because it brings back some of the best memories we probably had watching wrestling. You're absolutely right about that. And eight, and I'll, we'll get more into the Wednesday night wars in a little bit because I mean, and it's not a war yet. It's more of just Wednesday night alternatives mm. as they like to call it. Uh, there's no competition yet, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit more in a little bit. But uh, I, as far as wrestling, uh, wrestling experience for me, I did the backyard thing when the backyard uh, wrestling thing was big, uh, you know, and I had we, you know, there were some kids that built a ring, and you know, it was uh, it was a fun time. Uh, although did get a couple of uh, a couple of big injuries from it, but not not major. Now, what was the biggest? <laughs> biggest injury was actually a uh, uh, partially torn okay. ACL. Uh, Someone, someone went to give me a chop block, but instead of hitting me in the back of the knee, they hit me Ooh. in the side of the knee. Uh, yeah, so for about two months in high school, I had knee immobilizer on. And, uh, you know, that was not a fun time. But, you know what, life goes on. And, uh, you know, I'm happy being on the outside just being a fan at this point. And uh, that's one thing I want to kind of move into is wrestling fandom. And... You know, we. I know that you're on uh, Instagram. I know you're on Facebook. I don't know if you're on Twitter or not. Uh, but the wrestling fan today is not I what agree. it used to be. Yep. And I think I think social media has ruined. I and, and we knew kayfabe was dead a long time ago, but I honestly feel like social media has ruined wrestling and fandom. Going off of that. I don't even think it's so much social media has ruined it. I think it's us, the fans, have ruined it. Because back in the day, we always wanted to know who was behind the scenes. You know, when uh, yep. Rikishi, so we thought, did it for The Rock and ran over The Rock. Right, you know, yeah. You always were, were thinking, who, who actually did it? Was it Triple H? You know, right. What, or uh, ran over Stone Cold, not not The Rock. Uh, right, yeah. You know, who, who could yeah. it be? Nowadays, we're so in tune with trying to be first than actually taking a step back yeah. and being entertained. And so many people, quite frankly, they just want to be famous. They just want to get their, oh, yes, you know, I, I'm the first one to do it right. I took a picture of Undertaker, you know, uh, with a selfie with AJ Styles. You know, how, how are you supposed to yeah. build that up? Like, p- people are, are too entwined to their ego, and social media is a platform where they can be the first one to break the news. Uh, and it's, it's, right. it's depressing because can you imagine so many of the angles, you know, in the, at least the modern day, that have released that would have been absolutely amazing if social media wasn't around? Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. And, you know, it could, things could have mm-hmm. been built a lot better, you know, and I, and it's, it's the truth. And honestly, I have to say being today's April 1st, Wrestle just to kind of break the fourth wall, WrestleMania was already pre-taped last week, March 25th and 26th due to the coronavirus. And, and now, as we know, Florida is on lockdown. So WWE put a lot of uh, programming in the can uh, just in case that happened, WrestleMania is already. I am so shocked that no spoilers have gotten yes. out. I mean, we know we yep. know it was a closed set, but at the same time, I guess there are no there there have been no leaks of of any any of the results of WrestleMania. Yeah, and, and here's what I'm thinking, and you know, I don't want to. I hopefully, fingers crossed, we go into it. And we have no idea. And we're at least entertained. You know, we're at least entertained. But there's always that one knucklehead that's probably in the production crew that's probably not getting paid right 
that will leak the footage or not leak the footage, but probably leak the script, leak the results yep. the morning of WrestleMania, the night before WrestleMania. Yeah. And it's, it's unfortunate, but um, yeah, I, I think the best thing that we can do as fans leading up to this, and I know it's tough, but at least for wrestling news, stay away from it. Don't, don't look up the dirt sheets. Yeah. Don't, don't look up anything. Because so many people are probably talking scenarios and they don't know what's going on. Right. You know, it, exactly. It, it, there's a scenario. Will the American badass come back? I would love it. You know, but we, yeah. I want to see that unfold. I don't want to be told ahead of time and then watch it. It's, it's not the same right. pop. It's not the same feel. You're right. It's, it's, it's not the same. And, and you know what? And something like that, honestly, it kind of brings me next to WrestleMania itself, being that it's no fans in attendance. It takes, you know, understandably with, with the times we're in now, they have to have a closed set. But that's going to take away mm-hmm. the pop. So if the American Badass comes back, number one, in the Performance Center, I doubt he's if he came out on a motorcycle like he did, uh, I doubt he'd have any kind of room to actually ride it. That's but a good point. Yeah. There, you know, could, th- that would have been a huge pop if it was still at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Uh, but, you know, we th- I honestly thought that the American Badass were to come back when uh, uh, yep. he faced John Cena. You know, because he had put down the 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 hat and the gloves and the trench coat. Okay, well that might have that could have put the nail in in that character of the Undertaker. Now let's move on to more, move back to the biker gimmick. But it didn't happen. How do you see the WrestleMania going with no fans in attendance? Absolutely insane. Uh, yeah. Gosh, you know, but we're excited, man. And it, regardless, as long as they put on a good show. Right. And that's one of the biggest things is that I applaud WWE and AEW both for continuing to provide new, fresh programming. And, you know, understandably, the XFL, the NBA, the NHL, Major League Baseball, they've all canceled or postponed their seasons because of this. I get it. I applaud WWE and and AEW for taking the measures to say, you know what? We may not be able to have fans, but we're still going to provide entertainment during this time. Everybody's sitting home. You know, malls are closed. Movies are closed. Gyms are closed. Bowling alleys. Everything is closed. So what do you do? You could sit back and Skype, (laughs) which is great. You could play some video games. But ultimately, every TV show that's currently in production is shut down. So the only new programming that's going to come out of this is... Now, see, Vinny, I actually... I have a different opinion to that. Uh, Okay. I liked it at first. But we only... At least me as a fan, I only can watch so many empty arena matches... Where it, it takes right. it away. Yep. Okay. And I think, and this, this is just me looking in, on the outside, they need to start doing something because they won't be lasting. I think Rob maybe had 12 minutes of, of action, and now they're showing highlights or reruns. Yeah. AEW is on tonight. Why don't they show Revolution? Mm-hmm. Well, that that was I actually want to I actually brought that up a couple days ago mm-hmm. in, in my podcast that um, honestly I feel like see AEW is in a unique position because they're a new company but I agree show you yep. can show all in you can show all out you know you've got two hour episodes okay show two hours of all out and then next week show the other two hours then you could show Revolution or Full Gear and kind of build up the fan base that way. So again, you're not doing, because I got to tell you last week with the teleportation angle with Matt Hardy was just it was tough. dumb. It was tough opinion. to watch. It, it, it was, it was really tough. Cause it's like, you can only suspend disbelief for so much. Um, 
I under you know I didn't mind too much about him quote unquote letting off the pyro with supernatural powers. Undertaker and Kane did that you know years ago. That I didn't have a problem with. The teleportation is a little bit of a stretch, uh, but you're right. I agree. So AEW should show those. WWE, I honestly feel like they, after WrestleMania, they should stop production, start showing, they have a huge-ass library, show some archival footage from the 90s, from the Attitude Era. You know, you've got Raw, SmackDown, NXT every week. Start showing some of this archival footage. You could throw on the FCW stuff on on NXT shows. Uh, Raw and SmackDown, you could show Raws and Nitros from the 90s. You could show, you know, Mid-South wrestling, stuff that the modern fan base hasn't seen. And you draw in some of the people that have left. Well, the that's, that actually years. leads to a really good point with WWE. Uh, and, and going off of that, you know, it's, it's going to be really interesting what they do after WrestleMania. And, and we all know the Raw after WrestleMania is, is, I call it the fourth pay-per-view, the fourth largest pay-per-view. It's, it's massive. Right. Uh, yep. They release a couple series on their network uh, regarding the Attitude Era and the Ruthless Aggression Era. Era. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on them just airing yep. that? Because it's some amazing content on, you know, on USA. Oh, network. absolutely. They should, and you know what? It would drive you know it would drive people to get the network, the WWE network, uh, and it would just bring up you know, a lot of the fans from the point of what wrestling was 20 years ago or more. Uh, I honestly feel that's a great idea, you know, and again, you could throw on the the documentaries that you have, yep. you know, you've got the Monday night war, you've got the attitude era, you've got the ruthless aggression era, you've got, uh, you know, the whole documentary on the NWO. Uh, you've got, just every you know world class yep. championship wrestling, uh, mid south. You got Smoky Mountain, albeit uh, a little bit of Smoky Mountain, not everything. Uh, you know, you got the Stampede from Calgary. You've got. I mean, they got enough. WCW. They got enough footage to, to last I mean, them until twenty fifty, if they if they want. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so, but the biggest Absolutely. thing, and, and I've been seeing this by I believe Brian Alvar- Alvarez is the viewership, mm-hmm. surprisingly, at least in the Wednesday Night Wars, they haven't increased. They've, they've stayed the same. And, and roughly, no. AEW is hitting you know, roughly about 900,000 uh, each Wednesday. And, and AEW is yep. around like the 550, 600 range. And everybody's home. Mm-hmm. So where's their, where's their excuse right now? They, they right. need something to pull them in. And Nobody wants to see an empty arena match. Nobody wants to see Matt. I, right. I love it if fans were there, but Matt Hardy, you know, disappear in one angle, they come in another with a kid. Or, but I do love. I will say, yeah. I do love Chris Jericho and him cutting a promo on a on a drone. That's that's absolutely that's pretty baller. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jericho, Jericho, in my opinion, is the greatest of all time, and. The reason why I say that is, no, he's not a Ric Flair. Ric Flair is in a category of his own. Hulk Hogan is in a category of his own. But what Hulk Hogan was to wrestling in the 80s and, and even going into the uh, 90s, Chris Jericho is the reason why wrestling yep. is still around and will remain around. And that's because he keeps reinventing himself. And the guy is about almost 50 years old, and he's still – performing at peak position may not be doing a lot of, you know, lion salts or, or stuff, but you know what he realized now at his age, he's doing more character driven stuff in term, instead and of it's amazing athleticism. It's amazing. He's, he's in great phenomenal shape. shape. And I mean, the guy, you hit the nail on the head. He's reinvented. He reinvented himself to the, he's a rock star now. He's more like, like the Fozzy. Like yeah. the, the lead singer. Uh, yeah. I mean, the guy came out a little bit of the bubble and uh, Le Champion. Like, it's yeah, it's awesome. He, he's, I would say he's probably it is. the number one superstar in all of wrestling right now. 
Yeah, I would definitely agree with you. Not not Absolutely. talent, not talent wise, but Mike Absolutely. and charismatic and and attraction. I'm turning on to see what Jericho's saying. Yep, you're right. I mean, and I have to tell you that a when I watch AEW, I fast forward through a lot of the a lot of some of the stuff because first of all, the women division is horrible. I'm not, and this is not a knock against Nyla Rose. That I don't care about. I mean, you know, in my opinion, professional wrestling is the only place where a transgender female could hold a championship in a women's division because it's predetermined. But that's my personal feelings. And this is not a knock on Nyla Rose. The women's division in AEW just isn't there. It's it's not where it should be. And I know that uh, Brian Last, who's Jim Cornette's uh, co-host, has said, shut down the women's division until you could pick it up. They have, and, and I think the bad, the, the part of it that turns people off is that there's a lot of, besides getting a lot of the indie talent, mm. a lot of it just isn't believable. Like, and, and, and again, wrestling is where you go to suspend disbelief, but I can't see a 98 pound <laughs> Riho beating <laughs> Nyla Rose. Absolutely. For, or for not time. only that, I mean, they do, they really stretch the imagination. Really. And, and they're, yeah. Yeah. Their women's division definitely needs something because it's, it's, it's in rough shape right now, but it'll get, it'll only get better. Exactly. It'll get better. Absolutely. Uh, I'm okay. big on Chris Statlander. I really think that she's a, she's a fantastic talent they have, and they could build. You know, they, they screwed up with Britt Baker. They wanted to make Britt Baker the face of the women's division, and she just wasn't Man, ready Man, did for you it. watch that one uh, show where they were booing her and they just cut directly to commercial? She was cutting a promo. Yeah, they, I did. They cut mid, <laughs> mid-promo right to commercial. That's That's rough. <laughs> You're you're right, absolutely. But I think that's where I, I think that's where we're going to see the differences between WWE and AEW. Is AEW is getting people from the indies, and while the indies are good, you know, a good breeding ground, they don't have the experience in front of large live crowds or live TV. Whereas in WWE, having the Performance Center and NXT, you know, they may not be going on in front of bigger crowds, but they have the experienced teachers there. You know, they have uh, Norman Smiley down there. They have Billy Kidman. They have, you know, all these guys that have been in the WWE system or mm-hmm. outside of their system teaching them. And, and they're doing promo class, and it's being fed to, you know, Stanford with Triple H, you know, and Shawn Michaels could oversee it. And that's going to be where you see the main difference until AEW finds or develops some kind Absolutely. of Absolutely. And, you know, system. everybody and, – and, and think, they're not even a year old yet. You know, so it's, it's definitely right. exciting. Absolutely. They, they got a lot of good parts. And Tony Khan, he, he has something brewing up. And I'm, I'm excited to see who else, you know, within the next year – by by December is going to jump sh- ship. You know, you got quote unquote Brody Lee and Matt Hardy. Um, yep. You have Jack Sw- Jack ha- Jake Hager. Um, obviously mm-hmm. John Moxley. You know, I'm I'm huge on yep. EC3. I I think WWE yep. really missed the boat on this guy. He must have pissed someone off in the back uh, because this guy has he has everything. But you know, I don't. I don't necessarily know if he pissed someone off in the back. I think it's one of those cases where he wasn't mm. a Vince creation. You know, he came over from TNA. He was actually in WWE previously yep. as Derek Bateman, and then went over to TNA and became you know Dixie Carter's uh, what nephew or or something. Uh, honestly, what Vince should have done is get Dixie Carter is no longer involved with TNA. Why couldn't he – I mean, hell, we saw Eric Bischoff come over right after the Monday Night War. Why couldn't he have her come on as an on-screen manager for EC3? That, do you know how much that, that would have generated? 
You, I mean, and then you imagine yeah, face offs between guys like like Styles. You know, th- this was at the time where even Kurt Angle yep. was still kind of in the picture, and I would love to see you know Kurt Angle talking exactly. to like Baron Corbin backstage, and then him looking, and then it goes to a cameo, and you see Dixie Carter. <sighs> right, man. Yeah. It- that I I think they missed the ball with that, but yeah, I think if EC3 anything, he would benefit from AEW. Any and it would bring over another really great talent, young talent to too. AEW. Young, um, exactly. Yep, because Jericho's no matter how good he is, yep. he's not going to be around forever. You know, Billy Gunn, it's the same thing. He's doing some stuff as a wrestler, but he's doing a lot behind the scenes. Uh, Moxley's there. You know, he's still in his prime. Uh, but they they need younger talent that and I'll, <laughs> I'll word this delicately because I don't see a lot I don't see eye to eye with a lot of AEW fans uh, because I'm okay. not huge on the Young Bucks I I'm not a big Young Bucks fan I I appreciate their athleticism but I can't get into their storytelling and uh, super kicks too many in spots. the majority of their matches like. Too many, too yep. many high spots. Not enough psychology, and that's unfortunately one of the one of my biggest uh, pet peeves with AEW is that there's not enough psychology and there's too many high spots. Where do you, you know? And and it's funny because I've been watching a lot of older, older WrestleManias, older stuff over the past uh, past couple weeks, you know. And some of the longest matches in history that I've seen didn't have half of the high-flying high spots that they have now. There's more risk to them, which, okay, they're exciting. I'm not going to deny that. But they have to be strategically placed throughout the match. You never, ever see a bear hug anymore. Maybe was Brock Lesnar 03? You know? <laughs> when he I, had yeah, that? You're probably right. Um, yeah, but... You don't see the bear hug anymore. You don't see the, you know, mm. the wear down holds. They're all high spots. You know, go back to go back to um, Hogan Warrior WrestleMania six. You know, and neither one of them were the best wrestler, best worker, but the match was us was yep. the Warriors' best match ever, and Hogan performed great because. They brought the fans into it. And, and, and again, it goes back to the fact that there's a different type of fan nowadays. But the wear down holds and, and, you know, with the heel, whoever's working as a heel, you know, bearing his weight down on the baby face and fans getting up behind him and cheering him on. And you just get wrapped up in the emotion of the match. I think there's, I, I honestly think there's a, there's a disconnect with today's superstars where all they care about is the high spots and not enough getting the fans drawn into the full match rather than, you know, 30 seconds. Of and, somebody flipping and I will ask ropes. you this. I mean, you hit the nail on the head, but who do you think out of all the young guys right now in, in all of wrestling tells the best stories from the psychology? you like, like true young MJ. Oh, no doubt. MJF. Exactly. MJF, absolutely. He is not not only is he the best heel in the business, he's the the best young talent in the business. You know, his his psychology is, is uh off the chart. You know, he knows he you gets know, his it. promos are outstanding. I'm excited he to see he gets uh, Wardlow and to see what he turns into. Because he's a big yeah, physical guy. Right. Yep. He, he had his he needs to change up his finishing maneuver, at least in, in my mind, the F10. Uh, let's, let's be a little bit more creative than that. Yeah. Uh, but MJF, he's a former Division I uh, football player. And then uh, he, he actually dropped out of okay. college yep. because he didn't end up uh, becoming the starter his freshman year. And uh, he told his mom, he's like, wow, mom, dad, I'm going to become a wrestler. And uh, and this was just a couple of years ago because mm-hmm. MJF's twenty four, uh, so and, yeah. and now yep. you know look where he is. He's one of the top, if not the number one heel in the company. And um, 
he gets under your skin. And he does, and he keeps up these yes, characters flipping off outside kids of the to, ring. You know, to tell telling off parents. <laughs> yeah, you you yep. love to see it. Hmm. Exactly, and that's and I think that's that's unheard of nowadays, especially I mean, on WWE standpoint. You know, I made a you'll never see a heel you're, right you know, exactly peg, peg a kid off. I think well, Baron, Baron, you're right. Nobody's gonna flip a kid off. Absolutely, I think Baron Corbin comes close, staying mm-hmm. in character ninety percent of the time. Um, but like I, I made a comment a couple years ago okay. because I follow Alexa Bliss on Twitter. And uh, she posted a picture of her pet pig that she adopted. And, you know, he's a, <laughs> I think he's deaf and whatever. And she takes good, such good care of him. She's a good person. And, and, I'm, and I responded, replied to one of her tweets. And I said, you know, seeing you as such a good-hearted person makes me mm. not want to boo you while you're in the ring. And even though, you know, it's such a dichotomy in wrestling because we know they're portraying characters. But it's so it's so different. It's always been different. You could watch a movie, you could watch a TV show, uh, and know that you know Will Smith is pl- is playing a character on there. So he, we know he's not like that in real life. We know that he's a different person. Whether it's uh, Will Smith or Jennifer Aniston or Jim Carrey or whatever, we know they're portraying a character. And I think. From what I, from what I think the difference is, is that we see actors in different roles throughout their career. Wrestlers, for the most part, mm. are in the same roles for the for their entire career. It's their same name if they're in the same company or what have you. So, so, so looking and seeing Alexa Bliss as having such a big heart to adopt a deaf pig, I can't boo her in the ring. You know, because yeah, and I know that she's you know, a good and, and it comes back today where, I mean, so much has changed over 20, 20 years, Vinny. Where, you know, kayfabe, unfortunately, it's, yeah. it's dead, and, and the very few, <clears throat> maybe, maybe a, maybe a handful of guys left, uh, you know, that still embody it. But I, I guess it's just the times, and unfortunately, we'll kick, we'll scream, we'll we'll fight about it, but. We had we had to get used to the the high flying ricochet right. fights and um, you know six minutes bam wham thank you ma'am everybody hits their finishing maneuver kicks out, uh, which I don't even think there's a finishing exactly. maneuver anymore. It's now called a signature, you know. I I think that's what it is. But I agree, and and we're gonna have to get used to it. And there's a spot, you know, which is why. I never really got a chance to really get into MLW because there's so much wrestling on nowadays, but uh, MLW has offered the different styles. And I think that's a good thing in that they have the high flying, but then they have, you know, classic, more classic wrestling. They have Lucha, they have, you know, some hardcore stuff, which is why their, their show is called fusion because it's all different styles together. And, and I agree. There's a spot. There is a place, you know, which is why WCW in the 90s, when yep. they had the cruiserweights and the luchadors in there, they had their spot. You know, now, I mean, but again, you you said you put it, you said it best. It's a different time now, because back then the cruiserweights were the only ones that were under 250. Now. I mean, last year Kofi Kingston was the world champion. He's at least, yeah, if not no less. more than two thirty-five. Yeah, if not less. And there's no heavyweight division other than Brock Lesnar. Drew McIntyre could be close. She- you know, Sheamus could be close. But there's no heavyweight division anymore. Now and they're all that leads to a good close point. Cruiserweight. Can you or, or do you ever think? The WWE will try to because their biggest competitor right now is is not AEW, I think is the UFC. And can you ever see them exactly. try yep. to, in the best way they can, bring in a quote unquote heavyweight title instead of the WWE or the Universal, where instead of the two hundred five live, now you have to be uh, two eighty five, and try to emulate that. So now you have guys like Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman. And try to build up these powerhouses again. 
because they need a big, like a larger than life big guy. You'll still have your universal, but uh, you're right. I'm sick and tired of seeing damn Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. <laughs> yeah, no, I, and I agree with you. I think I don't. I don't know if they'll actually go. I mean, they tried bringing in Kane Velasquez. Apparently, he's still training at the performance that went center. horrible. He did get hurt or whatever. And, and he doesn't even look. It did. It, it like, absolutely went uh, horrible. W, he's, he's an MMA fighter. And the guy, unfortunately, looks like his, his belly. <laughs> you know, I'm not one to talk. But <laughs> yeah, but his belly looks like you put a, no, a, I know. a bushel here. in the microwave for 30 seconds. And then you took it out. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and, but And th- that kind of goes it. to show the mm. difference. I mean, look at Tank Abbott. Tank Abbott back in the 90s was a fantastic shoot fighter or UFC re- fighter. But, again, he yep. didn't have the t- prototypical body of a wrestler. You know, and and I think that's going to be the biggest difference. You're, you could have your Conor McGregor, who does look like a, a, an athlete, you know, looks like a fighter. Would and love he, him. he would be a fantastic guy in the WWE. Uh, uh, but, you know, then you have a lot of the guys that – you could be a big fighter without being a muscular guy. I mean, hell, Brock yep. Lesnar, if you could just get him to smother you, you're out, you know? And he, but I mean, he's a beast. He, he's, he's a once in a lifetime athlete. No doubt about it. Uh, but that, yeah, I agree. I, I think, I don't know if they'll necessarily go with a heavyweight division because of all the, you know all the all the medical uh, advancements where right. you got to be yep. healthier lifestyle, and you know you don't want to take steroids, you don't want to be overly huge, you don't. You know, I don't think they could get. You know, gone are the days where you're gonna where you'd see Hulk Hogan at three hundred and three pounds. You know, gone are the day, and, and I don't even think they're guys that are even that tall anymore. You know, Andre the Giant was a once in a big show, once in a lifetime guy. You know that you know you have uh, Braun Strowman. Where nowhere. where anybody else his size? There there's nowhere. Yep. And they got him from the strongman competition. You know, there's no and not only real big, giant, big but big giants, giants that anymore. can at least move, move around. Um, right. So may, maybe they need exactly. to do a better job recruiting O line and D line. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Or basketball players. I, I know they got a guy in the <laughs> developmental some, some height in there. That's uh, uh, about seven feet. Yes. Yep. Baba Tunde. Okay. Baba Tunde. Yeah. Yep. And I think there's another guy too, Dan Matha. He's another one in, in developmental. They they both okay. they were both on I the didn't, Saudi I didn't show, end up Greatest seeing that. Royal Rumble. Uh, How they look? Um. Yeah. They were. I mean, they were they were green. I mean, that was almost two years ago now. So then they haven't even made it to, I think Dan Matha competes in NXT UK, but I haven't seen Baba Tunde uh, actually on, on TV other than that one show. So they're, okay. they're still in the performance center training, I guess. Uh, one thing I do want to bring up is listening to uh, yeah. your podcast, Memory Lane last week, you guys did uh, you and your, your, your guest host, uh, Oh, you yes. You guys did your oh, top yes. five WrestleMania matches. And uh, give a brief rundown. Uh, for, yeah, for absolutely. We actually broke it down to off. top three. So top three. Uh, and, and we went one by one. So, you know, some of my favorite WrestleMania matches happened, you know, back in kind of the Attitude Ruthless Aggression era. So, uh, so I broke it down. And I yep. can't, Vinny, as a grown man, I can't watch it without getting emotional. But my number three favorite was um, WrestleMania 20, the main event, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and Chris Benoit, and, and, and seeing everything that Benoit went through. And now, mm-hmm. obviously, they have the, the Vice uh, documentary on his life, and, and everybody knows about Chris Benoit. But seeing that visual of – him facing the crowd, turning around, and, and his best friend Eddie with the belt over his shoulder, clapping his hands with a yeah. face full of tears, and then them embracing and Jim Ross in the background. You, you, 
I don't know if wrestling can ever emulate a moment like that. Two true be- best friends who, eerie enough, you know, two, three years later are no longer with us. Um, one of my, oh, yep. man, one of my, my, one of my favorite matches of all time. And uh, breaking it down, my number two was, was an absolute classic. Uh, WrestleMania 7, 17, The Rock versus Austin 2. And, you know, you, you have some of the best people yep. on the – anytime when you have Jim Ross announcing in the early 2000s, I don't care if it's a Braun Panties match mm-hmm. or if it's a, a, a Boneyard match, it, it, it's going to be a slobber knocker. And you have the two yep. of the top guys in the company. And if anybody that's listening that doesn't know who those two guys are, the, I, I'm sorry to say, Vinny, they might be listening to the wrong podcast. <laughs> So, um, you yeah, know, two right. of the best. And no one, and the best thing at the time, no one was really either just a rock fan or an Austin guy. You loved them both, and they both entertained you on completely right. different. Like, people wanted to always be Stone Cold, the guy to tell his boss off, the, the guy that no matter what, he's just going to kick your ass yep. and drink his beer and go home. That's a blue-collar worker. That's the, the the everyday American man, and then you have right. The Rock, you know, third generation superstar, a guy that has more charisma that he could probably the room will fill up with the lights off, um, and obviously the most electrifying mm-hmm. guy. He knows how to tell a story. When he gets hit, you know, you feel it, uh, and these guys clash, and, and they've been building it up for months and months and months. And the promo, uh, you know, sometimes. You know, when I'm in the weight room and if I ever need to get, you know, amped up, I, I put on the WrestleMania 17 promo and, and then that's all I need. And then these mm-hmm. guys just as soon as the bell rings to the very end and seeing the turn after all these years of Stone Cold and and his hatred for Vince McMahon, he shakes hands with the devil at the very end. And, and you hear Jim Ross say, like, why Stone Cold, you son of a bitch, why? Uh, it's it, it, he seeing him raise his hand like it, it was unbelievable. And then my number one was uh, the icon versus icon match, the the Rock again versus Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Um, you know, out in Toronto, Canada, mm-hmm. uh, seventy thousand plus, you know, screaming fans. And and at the time, the way they built it was Hulk Hogan was a heel, and they expected. Yep this to be a pro rock crowd and uh and then just seeing the You're face right. off and how the crowd was i, I want to even say i wouldn't say completely split but maybe 55 45 more toward hogan and it, i'm talking about this right now and i got goosebumps Vinny. uh everybody like mm-hmm. i can't imagine the adrenaline looking left Looking right and seeing 70, there wasn't a single person sitting down in their chair. And then uh, it, it was absolutely right. electric, the, the entire match. And seeing Hulk Hogan take off his belt uh, with the rock. And, you know, he's, he's playing the heel. And then the rock turning, turning the ropes and, and him whipping Hulk Hogan's ass. Um, and then the... You know, he pins him one, two, three, and it's it's passing the torch and told an incredible story. And and then Scott Hall and Kevin Nash comes out and yeah, uh, it's and then Hulk Hogan turns babyface. All within it was it was a wild match, but it's it's something yeah. that and, and I mentioned this over in the Memory Lane podcast. But if I were to talk to anybody, any anybody that says, "Look, I I don't like wrestling. I, I'm not going to watch wrestling," I say, "Look." I'm going to show you one match and one match only. And this is going to be the match. And I guarantee mm-hmm. you, unless this person's completely tone deaf or they or they're blind. Actually, even if they're blind, they'll probably fall in love. This is mm-hmm. the match that really cemented my love for for wrestling. So that's that those are my three favorite and and you know, if you haven't already done a recap, I would love to hear at least your top 3. Well, I got to tell you, we 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 share the the top one. I I have to completely agree with you. 
the Hogan Rock match from WrestleMania 18 in Toronto. It, I, I was just watching it the other day, and you're right. It, it still gives me goosebumps watching it because you had two – you basically had two generations. You had The Rock, who was – you know, you can't call him an up-and-comer because he did have, mm-hmm. you know, five years at least under his belt and, you know, two or three years as a top guy. And then you had Hulk Hogan, who was the top guy of the 80s and even and reinv- reinvigorated him, his career in the late 90s. And you had the two guys, they were at the top of their game. Promos were fantastic, uh, all from the top uh, on down from when the NWO came into WWE. And nobody wanted to boo Hogan. And you know, he was coming home, albeit as Hollywood Hogan, not the red and yellow, not the one that, that slammed Andre the Giant <laughs> at 700-pound stinking giant WrestleMania three. Um, it was, you know, he was in the NWO, the the poison that put WWE. Oh, you got to say it like Vince business. McMahon busy. busy. And, Come on. Say, say it like that. <laughs> the cancer. <laughs> Ooh. I'm injecting my company with poison. Um, um, yeah, so you had Hogan come back and, and Hogan and the Rock. And Canada has always been bizarro land. I mean, from the late 90s, you know, when Bret Hart was a heel in the U.S., he was a baby face everywhere else in the world. You know, you go to Canada and it was it was complete opposite. And And Toronto being... Where, you know, being a big WWE stronghold for so many years, all they saw was Hogan, Hogan, Hogan. And and then, you know, when he had his match with the Ultimate Warrior WrestleMania 6 in the same building, uh, it was outstanding. And going up, going up there for 18 against The Rock, nobody wanted to boo him. So mid-match, yeah, they ended up changing. Hogan was the babyface. The Rock was the heel. Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler on commentary switch roles, you know, because they knew they they just felt it from the crowd. And and I, you know, like I had texted you, Hall and Nash coming out uh at the end, that was an ad lib from Vince himself. They they heard the crowd, they heard it, they said, We can't have Hogan as a heel anymore. You guys go out there and you know, I'm sure I'm sure they let the referee know to let Hogan and the Rock know, whatever. But you know, they sent they sent uh, Hall and Nash down to basically kick Hogan out of the NWO because they they knew that they weren't going to be able to keep him a heel. Uh, so that would definitely be my number one match. Uh, as far as number three match of all time, you know, I got to agree with you uh, with, the, with the Benoit, Shawn Michaels, Triple H. I think, you know, Given what Benoit did to his family, you know, and, and you know his history is is erased from the company, and you know we'll never see him in the Hall of Fame. I'll, you know, uh, he was still he's still one of the greatest wrestlers that was ever around, and that match told a story, you know, because you had on his last day in WCW, he finally mm. won the world title, you know, and he gave up the world title to come to WWE for a better opportunity. And, you know, and then again, four or more years later, you know, you, you finally get to that point again. And Benoit, you finally, you finally win that title against two stalwarts of the WWE, uh, Shawn Michaels and Triple H, you know, two guys that have been friends and enemies had DX and everything. And then you got Benoit who, just kind of, you know, stayed to himself and just fought. You know, he was the guy that just crawled and 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 crawled from the from the bottom to the top. And again, you know, I'm not I'm not the biggest Eddie Guerrero fan. While I can appreciate his work, um, you know, I was never a huge Eddie okay. Guerrero fan, but I was a huge Benoit fan because I appreciate. You know, he was never great on the mic, but he said what he needed to say and he got the work done. Um, but go if I had to go through my 
top three matches. So we already know Rock and Hogan, number one. Uh, my number three match would probably be Randy okay. Savage, Ricky Steamboat from WrestleMania three. Uh, you know, great technical match. And honestly, even though the people came and paid money to see Hogan and Andre, they absolutely uh, Savage and Steamboat stole the show. And they were, you know, that match was was as you know back and forth as it can be. It had the highs, the lows, and you know, with George Steele on the outside and Elizabeth on the outside, uh, just absolutely fantastic. And uh, so that match was just I, I, that was the emotional roller coaster of the night, uh, stealing the show. And then number my number two match. Have to go to. Um, I I have to before I go to my number two. I have to point out you're probably the only person that I've heard that actually gives a positive response to Austin turning heel on the Rock at WrestleMania 17. Um, everybody else shits on that that finish, um, and even Austin himself said that was the biggest regret he's ever had was turning heel. Because especially in Texas, nobody wanted to boo him uh, for you know for joining McMahon. So I have to give you credit because you're the only person that I know of that actually and you looks see at that, it looks makes at that sense as though a positive. you know you can have the you can have this oh it does anywhere, completely anywhere anywhere but, but it, Texas it makes it even more because the fans like it, watching it live obviously it yep. sucks if you're a fan at WrestleMania 17 but. You know, the fans itself watching it on the TV, you're in disbelief. And that's 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 the purpose of WWE. Yeah. It's not like that was his last match ever. They got him. You know, they got him. And, and it leads right. to, all right, yep. the show must go on. What's next? Now I'm tuning in. I'm going to see Stone Cold and, and McMahon, you know, after WrestleMania. Oof. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and my number two match would probably end up being Undertaker, Triple H, Hell in Ooh. a Cell, WrestleMania 28, the end of an era match with Shawn Michaels as the guest referee. That match had everything in it. You know, you had, you had, you know, Shawn Michaels trying to help Triple H win until he regretted it when the Undertaker kicked out. You know, having all three of those guys in there was probably, you know, yeah, it was deemed the end of an era, but it was still the culmination of, you know, three careers that had intercepted so much, intersected so much through the Attitude Era. You know, Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker were the only two that stayed it's crazy. loyal to the WWE throughout the Monday Night War. You know, and, and, and Triple H to a lesser degree, you know, but it was still Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker, both of them being there from, you know, obviously Michaels uh, was there from, you know, from the late 80s. You know, Undertaker came in in 1990. Michaels took some time off to get his career back. You know, two years earlier, The Undertaker ends his career at WrestleMania in another great match. Uh, but to have Michaels there who, People are questioning, does he want revenge on The Undertaker? You know, Michael is Triple H's best friend. All three of them locked in a hell in a cell. You know, no no other, no escape and no no interference. And just the, the and then at the very end, after, you know, Undertaker beats Triple H, and then the three of them are up at the, at the top of the ramp, and you had Undertaker and Shawn Michaels holding Triple H up, mm. and they look back at the crowd, and you just feel the goosebumps because these three entertained you for their entire career, and tonight put it all on the line. And if Undertaker or Triple H retired after that match, their their, their careers yep. would have been, you know, it would have been fulfilled. And I don't think anybody would have ever had a crossword to say. Uh, but that, you know, even thinking about it, you got to, you know, you feel the emotions. 
Uh, but hey, I want to uh, I want to you know give you give you a chance to plug uh, your podcast, your, show, your yeah, social yeah, absolutely, media. man, absolutely. Uh, and f- first and foremost, uh, let's. We're not going to, you know, you can't build up the hype of this match and, and then go straight into the plug. Vinny, we're talking about a classic, man. I mean, th- I might actually put that match on tonight. <laughs> I might. It was, uh, I mean, from the start <laughs> yeah. to the end, you felt it. And, and like you said, they they all essentially were were teamed up together and they just looked off into the – into the thousands of the screaming fans at WrestleMania. Uh, before we get into that, you know, me plugging, I'm curious, and I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Yeah. Outside of the typical okay. ones, like I'm talking the TLC, WrestleMania 25, Michaels, Undertaker, what is your favorite underrated mm-hmm. WrestleMania match of all time? With WrestleMania being right around the corner, a match that, quite frankly, no one talks about. Hmm, that's a good that's a good question. Um, favorite underrated. You know, I've got to go. I've got to <laughs> go. No matter how bad it was, because the the crowd the the event itself was wasn't the greatest WrestleMania, but okay. I have to go with Hulk Hogan and Sid at WrestleMania eight, and. The reason why I say that is not only did you have two guys who potentially could have been big superstars. Obviously, Hogan was. Sid could have been had he not had such a penchant for playing softball. Uh, but you had the the return of the Ultimate Warrior. You had you know Papa Shango come out. You know that obviously he was off cue, but. That match, even though it was a really bad pay-per-view, a really bad match, it was Hogan's perceived last WWE match. He did come back, you know, for WrestleMania 9, mm. but he was gone for a year, you know. So, in in essence, he could have and, and probably should have passed the torch to Sid to be that next big thing. Uh, you know, they turned Sid heel because... You know, they needed a, a match for Hogan and, you know, two big guys, but they wanted to build Sid as a monster heel. Uh, it just didn't pan out. Uh, but I really do enjoy that. I actually enjoy that entire event. Uh, but a lot of it has to do with Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan on commentary because their chemistry on the mics, they are the best commentary really? duo, in my opinion. Uh, go, girl, girl, Monsoon and Bobby the Brain Heenan, Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler are close second and possibly, possibly even tied. But yeah, girl, Monsoon and Bobby Heenan just absolutely fantastic. I well, I'd like say the, the craziest thing is, is you go from history. Bobby Heenan and, and Gorilla Monsoon to essentially you know you, you have a couple in betweeners, but and then you go to Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler. You don't have like a blue chip. Announce mm-hmm. you have Corey Graves, but like this is really tough, like really tough to follow up. And and God bless Jim Ross, and you know still doing it. Same with same with the King. Uh, but what I would love, and, and I don't yep. know if it will happen. I'm a huge fan of uh, Moral Ronaldo, um, however you say his name. And if 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 you put him and Corey Graves together, that yep. that could be something. That it could be absolutely. I like Morrow. I think he gets a little too. I, I okay. like his passion. I think he gets a little too passionate at times. But um, no, I do. I like him, and I and I think if you put him and Corey together, you would have a you'd have a great team. Absolutely, I like Corey Graves. I'm high on him. Mm. You know, he's another one that kind of maintains character. He's snarky uh, outside of yeah. the industry. You know, on on social media, exactly. You know, and. and and unfortunately, there's a lot of people that don't appreciate that, um, you know, because especially in this cancel culture that we're, we live in now, you say something cross-eyed about something, about someone, and automatically you're, oh, you're yeah. you know, uh, America's most wanted, you know. 
uh, he said, because he actually said something about, you know, the commentary of Moro Ronaldo at a takeover uh, a couple months back, you know, how he wasn't letting, you know, Beth Phoenix or Nigel McGuinness get a word in, you know, and, and Corey had put, put a tweet out that said, you know, just saying that there's, all, there's a WWE Hall of Famer and a former great wrestler <laughs> that are there, but you wouldn't know it. Um, and he got That's a amazing. lot of, he got a lot of Twitter hate for that, <laughs> but it was still, you know, um, I like Corey Graves. I really do. Um, I like, I, I like his style because he's, a, he's, a, he's like mm. a, he's like That's a, a good newer way to version yep. of Jesse Ventura, you know, and he, he is. And, uh, I really like his style. I do. Um, but you're right. Uh, you know, that was another underrated yes. commentary team, Vince McMahon and Jesse Ventura. Um, they were, you know, they were a good commentary duo. I, I you know, I like how on SmackDown, uh, was it last week or, or the week before the Triple H uh, was there with Michael Cole and he kind of, you know, uh, poked a little fun <laughs> at Vince's commentary saying, what a maneuver. Um, you know, because Vince was never – Never that guy to really do give it a sports presentation like Jr. did. Um, you know, he wasn't a guy that gave the anatomical uh, uh, side of things like Gorilla Monsoon did with the lateral, lateral collateral ligaments. Paints and a the, picture. You know, just uh, it's hilarious. Right, it paints a picture, and, and he had a different style. You know, he 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 was more into the storytelling because that was his baby. That you know, that's what he wanted to put over, and Jesse Ventura was Absolutely. a great fodder for him. Um, you know, going into this weekend's WrestleMania, uh, two nights, you know, no fans. They're both going to be three. Both nights are three hours and fifteen minutes long. Um, I, I you know what? I'm still excited yeah, yeah, for. It. I'm, I'm anxious. To I'm see excited how to see how it's it. all going to play out. Um, I think it's going to be better than what a lot of people think. Uh, because, you know, WWE, this is their yep. baby. Uh, and they will find a way to make it as entertaining as yep. possible. Now, what I want to know, and I'm really curious, what are they going to do with all, like, are they biting the bullet on the millions and millions and millions of dollars they spent on the fireworks? For WrestleMania, what are they? No, I th- I think from what they from what I've from what I've heard, I think the reason why they waited so long to cancel it or, or move it to the Performance Center is they were waiting for the town to kind of step in and say we're not going to let it happen so okay. that they could they could collect the insurance on it uh, for the money that they've spent, you know, and not to mention they could probably. I'm sure they could probably reuse the pyro at SummerSlam or whatever, whenever they may redo, you know, a big show again. Uh, but yeah, I think that's from what I was told, from what I've heard, that was uh, the reason why they waited so long. So they could, they could kind of go to their insurance company and say, listen, you know, we had every intention of holding it, but the, the yep. town, you know, the, the, the state, the government kind of said we can't. So you know, it was a business decision. I know they got a lot of heat for it, you know, and and it's funny because it, if you watched AEW last yes. week, Brody yep. Lee had his uh, skit who, and he was trying to, you know, he was, he was, he was ribbing on uh, Vince McMahon and Vince, you know, I, you ask anybody to know him, you know, he hates, you know, illness is a weakness. You know, and hate sneezes. So if somebody sneezes around, you automatically have heat with them. And it's funny because I was listening to, was it Jericho's podcast? No, it was, uh, who's podcast? I, I've listened to so many podcasts. I can't, forget, I can't remember from one to the other whose it was that I listened to. But it was one of the podcasts I listened to, listened to this week. And he said, this coronavirus is probably Vince McMahon's worst nightmare because he doesn't like to acknowledge illness. He doesn't like to acknowledge sicknesses. 
because he considers them weaknesses. And he's like, the fact that the whole world, there's a virus that this whole the whole world is prone to. Gosh. And, and well, he's like, there he was another secret his mind. rib in there as well. Uh, so Vince McMahon uh, or Brody Lee had Vince McMahon's favorite steak, and he ate it with ketchup. Which, right, which yep. was uh, what Vince does. So it, it, it's good to see. Yeah. You know, it's all in, it's all in good heart. Um, oh yeah, I oh, mean, yeah. WWE did the billionaire Ted skits back in the nineties, poking fun at Ted Turner. So I mean, it's it's good. To see, it, it it was fun seeing someone poke fun at Vince. Absolutely, I can't. So it's, you know, uh, I can't deny that. Now let me ask you, out of the entire WrestleMania match or show. What match are you looking forward to the most? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, before before we go there, before I say that, yep. I do want to kind of bring up the fact that Roman Reigns backed out uh, of his match with Goldberg. Um, you know, he said he didn't feel comfortable going there competing, even with the close set, because, you know, he is immunocompromised. You know, having leukemia, his immune system is not what it should be. And I don't blame him. He has, you know, I respect his decision. WWE accepted that. And, and now the Universal Championship match is Goldberg and Braun Strowman. Um, which I'm, I'm actually anxious to see how they're going to do that. Are they going to give Strowman the title? Or are they going to wait until this thing is over and have Goldberg hold the title? Uh, I mean, so they screwed much. up Braun He was the Strowman number one so, guy a couple so of years much. ago. You know, it's, it's like... Oh. He was... You know, and he should have be he should have had his title as, as soon as he partnered during when he had the match against Brock. the tag team match. If he um, picked the kid out of the stands, it, it took all the air out of him, out of this monster among yep. men. Like it's it, it and did. it's sad. You know, it's it's good to see. Yep. Like that, you don't always have to be the good guy. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And honestly, he should have stayed heel. I don't. I don't know why they. You know, and I. Unfortunately, I see it. He's going to be another big show, flipping back and forth between uh, baby face and heel. You know, wherever they may need him. But uh, so Goldberg is going to defend against uh, Braun Strowman now. Uh, you, you've got Rey Mysterio, who's you know been uh, isolated because of possible coronavirus con- contraction. So you know they had changed that to have. Andrade team with Angel Garza to uh, take on the Street Profits for the Raw Tag Team Championship. <laughs> but now Andrade's out with an injury. So it's going to be uh, Angel Garza teaming with Jordan Devlin, who I'm really high on because, I, you know, the only thing, the only time I actually really saw Jordan Devlin, other than a couple of NXT UK spots, was in the Evolve pay per view or Evolve special that they had on the WWE Network not too long ago. I think that was okay. opposite last year, opposite, I think Fighter Fest or something. Uh, but Jordan, you know, and then Dana Brooke is another one who, with uh, coronavirus concerns, was pulled out. Um, so making it now a women's, uh, for the SmackDown women's title, a uh, five way uh, elimination match instead of a six way. Uh, so is that, the, is that the last change? I think. Um, one thing I, I do want to bring up is, oh, yeah, uh, Akam and Razor, Razar, the AOP, are no longer part of uh, Seth Rollins' stable because Razar tore his bicep, and uh, he's going to be out for about six to eight months. Crazy. And they don't have anything <laughs> for – they didn't want Akam on his own. Uh, it is. But the, the tag team division on Raw is, is shot. The only two tag teams you've got are the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders. Which I'm kind of shocked why the Viking Raiders aren't getting the tag the tag title shot instead mm. of uh, Garza and Devlin. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me to have two guys thrown together. Just like I didn't I didn't see the the sense in having Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy as tag champions when you had AOP in the same stable. I, I mean, it didn't make sense to me. Um, but. Yeah, Viking Raiders doesn't look like they have, they have a match at all on the card. Uh, I am looking forward to seeing Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins. I am I'm big on Kevin Owens. I really, you know, I I liked him since he was in NXT. You know, I didn't see much of his Ring of Honor stuff, um, but I 
really liked how he's grown into his character and and come out you know he was out for quite a while with uh with an injury and came back last year um and i i like where they're going and i and honestly i wanted to shut Doesn't Seth it? Rollins up Seth Rollins it, voice gets on gets on my nerves it does it's like a whining kind of high pitched whine that's the only thing i can say is the whine i don't like Seth Rollins <laughs> I, I, or I mean, I pre- again, I appreciate his athleticism. It, it blows my mind. And, and I actually, I agree with you there. I've been watching uh, Kevin Owens since he was Kevin Steen uh, f- fighting way back in Ring of Honor. And, and uh, yep. you know, hearing the news, this was back in like 2013, that, look, be on the lookout for this guy wrestling local independence. He's supposed to be the next big thing. Uh, th- this is just, mm-hmm. he, yep. he gets it. It's real. It's real for him. And, you know, I, I think they're building the yeah. feud to the best they can mm-hmm. to just shut him up. Uh, but I do got to give credit. Uh, Seth Rollins right. got a hell of a promo on Kevin Owens uh, this past Monday Night Raw. Or maybe it was the one the week before when he, when he called himself a god and, and pretty much week like, before, yeah. Kevin Owens is not even on the same level. Yeah. Um, and that's, you like to hear that. So that, that was a good promo. Um, I am, yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm just excited to see how everything's going to play out and, and see what it's like. And, uh, I, I don't know if you're going to get into this a I little bit later, but, uh, Edge and Randy Orton. <sighs> oh, yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm, man, oh man. I can't wait to see how, how that goes. I hope I hope that that's one of the main events of one of the nights because I think that deserves well, at this it rate, over yeah. <laughs> the, honestly, over both title matches. Although I, although I do, I, I would like to see you know Drew Drew uh, McIntyre beat Brock Lesnar. Um, it would have been so much better with the fans there, you know, because you had the story build up, and and Drew McIntyre wasn't even in the title picture until Royal Rumble. You know what I mean? Like, he was going in as a favorite. You know, you start seeing inklings that he was going to get that giant push, but you just didn't know. And then when he knocked Brock, when he knocked Brock mm. out of the Rumble, you know, with the Claymore kick, Everyone. after Brock went on a tear of, <laughs> yep. of eliminating, like, 13 people, 14 people in a row, you know, it's like that cemented the, the main event, in my opinion, was when he, when that happened. So, you know... I would have, well, I would, you know, again, it's like a catch 22. It's like, do you go ahead and, 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 and give McIntyre the, the, the title? Or do you have Brock, do you have Brock win and retain only to per- see the, have the perception be that you're burying Drew McIntyre after this huge push and wait until, we could have fans again. Now, see, Summer I can see maybe. that. And then you have I McIntyre finally. I can see Brock Lesnar getting himself uh, disqualified. And, and it ending in a cluster. Okay. Um, and, and whether or not, you know, what, what that okay, leads yep. into. Because you can't, at least right now, in my opinion, it takes away that moment from Drew. And he needs that moment to build up. And who would have thought, you know, just a couple of right. years ago, uh, you know, two of the guys of 3MB. Uh, I, I'm a huge, I'm a massive Jinder Mahal fan. I'm a, I'm yeah. a big time Jinder Mahal fan. And, and these two guys were cut from the company just a couple of years ago. And now the soon to be potentially both yep. of these guys are, you know, uh, world world champions. And and Jinder is coming back from, uh, from an injury. He looks better than ever. What I would love to see. Me personally, yep. now you got a really good feud right here in the back pocket of Jinder coming back and then feuding with Drew. So it's 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 something to definitely look out for. And these right. guys have been really close friends, if not best friends. Um, but everything playing out, it's it's going to be interesting. And and on the cherry on top is, I think if anything, WWE should have just at least told Rob Gronkowski, look. Stay home. <laughs> there's, there's no need. 
it's it's going to be uncomfortable to see him yeah. as a host. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's going to be uncomfortable to see him as a host with no fans. It's like, you know, you bring him in because, okay, he's got mainstream appeal. He's done stuff with, with Bojo and Jinder before at WrestleMania. And I get it. You know, he's, he's, fan, he's friends with Triple H and Stephanie, and he's an over-the-top personality. But the fact that mm-hmm. there's going to be no fans in the building, why do you really need a host? You know, it's like it doesn't. Yeah, it it doesn't make sense to me. Like I would have, I would have said, you know what, stay home until Money in the Bank, stay home until SummerSlam. You know, whatever. When we're able to get get on with normal, uh, you know, normal events again, and that way you could hype up the crowd or whatever. Because what what is he really going to do? It. He's going to come out and say, <laughs> "Welcome to the show," and. Maybe and you can't of feed off the energy there, of the crowd. <laughs> so it's that in itself. That's that's going to be a little you can't uh, yep. unique, unique to say to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you know what? And, and honestly, I feel like the Edge and Orton match is gonna is is kind of the same thing, where Edge comes out. You know, at the Royal Rumble, the pop was huge. You know, coming back after being out for nine years, being told you'd never wrestle again, you know, and then the next night on Raw being attacked by Randy Orton. So it's another hurdle because, you know, the perception is, oh, my gosh, this guy just got cleared again after a neck injury and his former best friend, you know, just damaged his head and neck again. Uh, You know, and so now coming back, last man standing match, uh I, you know, again, when when all is said and done, and if Edge wins, and you know it's vindication, you know, and from what I heard, he signed a three year deal, uh, three matches yep. per year or whatever, so he's here to stay. You know, Randy Orton doesn't necessarily need the rub. I mean, you know, he's Randy Orton is a is is a better heel than a baby face, anyways. You know, and you've got the, the, the comeback story, you know. Uh, that's another one. I, I heard, I don't know how true it is, but I heard that WWE, I don't, obviously not over WrestleMania, but going forward, should this, you know, physical isolation stay, they've, they're going to start having. Skype feeds where fans can can join the show and have uh, really live um, reactions instead of yeah that's that's what I heard hmm. I don't know how true it is I, I don't know how they're going to do it it'd definitely be interesting I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea because when you it would be interesting but again how how do you yep. You can't control what the fans do when they're at their own house. Like, are they going to have like a, you know, a, a two minute a delay where they, where if, you know, some idiot gets on there and, and you know, just ends up flashing everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and uh, yep. uh, you know, pulls his junk out, you know, on cam. You're going to be able to catch that in time. I don't know how well you know, and of course you're gonna get you're gonna get somebody that's gonna try something stupid like that, anyways. Um, but I don't know. I don't. Well, not know only how that, it's can work. you imagine they do the live, live stream um, and like the the person's wearing like an AEW shirt? <laughs> I think that's even worse. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh but, uh, hey, uh, switching topics. I know we brought up, uh, you know, the Benoit, Dark Side of the Ring. Um, Actually, I just, a while ago. so I got Hulu. Do you uh, watch so uh, Dark Side of the Ring? I was watching all of them yesterday, and mm-hmm. I, I feel like I covered every single episode. I didn't know anything about Bruiser Brody. Uh, so that, that one, the most absolutely blew yeah. my mind about yep. how he would just I, I don't I don't know if you can swear on here but beat the Evan gloving crap 
out of people and just whip a chain <laughs> in the crowd. Uh, I mean, from yeah. that amazing story. And it's, I think it's excellently narrated and they have amazing people telling the story and it's, it's a completely different view. Obviously, with the Montreal screw job, uh, everybody knows that story, but it's, it's always, you know, nice to hear it again. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do too. And what I really liked about it is that they don't, you know, is that yes. you can tell that the producers are wrestling fans because they go at it and their, their stuff is historically accurate. You know, and everything is, you know, they, they talk to the right people. They get the right perspectives on there. And, you know, I did not back to yet. La- did you, I was actually did you just, to uh, last night's on New just Jack? about to watch that coming up. But I I know all the stories about New Jack. And, and I've actually heard that they were intimidated to even interview him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they were. And, you know, New Jack is another one that keeps his character intact. But then again, at some point you have to ask, where does the character and the person begin? Um, I watched it last night. And now I only knew New Jack from uh, ECW. I didn't know much about his stuff with Smoky Mountain or anything afterwards. So it was it was enlightening Mm. to me. And you know, just his demeanor, you know, saying that, you know, before his pre-match ritual was to it's good you know, ritual, snort yeah. coke and get high. <laughs> and it's like, holy crap. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, and, and people are worried about steroids and, and roid rage. And this guy is, you know, before every match going out and getting high. And, you know, he made a point to say how, you know, how do you think he jumped off the, you know, 40 foot, you know, balconies and stuff. He had to be out of his mind for to do something like that. No, no ambitions. I get it, but there's a certain point where you know, and this is one of the things that I have to, in my personal opinion, it's like, I honestly feel like you know, where do you draw the line between, you know, professional wrestling and a scripted, you know, a scripted absolutely, uh, and so I actually fight watched and a, a felonious a documentation on him a couple uh, of years ago you know, before any of this. So I feel like it's. It's going to be very similar, and uh, I, I'm sure they talked about the stat, the mass transit incident, and mm-hmm. uh, th- how he tried to kill pretty much a guy off yep, the scaffold. They did. Yeah, Nick Nick Grimes, and uh, you know, just watching yep, if they showed the yep. footage of him fighting this uh, uh, 76 year old man and just throwing <laughs> chairs at him, uh, and like. <laughs> And like fans yeah. were trying to yeah. like say, and all right, st- enough. And s- yeah. Um, yep. And at least in the in the documentation I watch, he, he's right. He's wrestling uh, an old legend out in like somewhere maybe like Tennessee, and Gypsy Joe. So I did they talk about yeah. him in the okay Gypsy Joe? Uh, how he just they did <laughs> cold yep. cocks some square in the face with chairs. And it was a no disqualification match or something, uh, yeah. hardcore match, and he gets disqualified. Yep. <laughs> and so he's just like, "How does that happen?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Don't need that's, that's, just, that's, that's for the, another the, episode. The there. Past year. Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, you know, next week's uh, ep- next week's. Uh, Okay. Episode of Dark Side of the Ring is all about the bra for all. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see that because I did, you know, I listened to the deep dive on the bra for all on uh, Bruce Pritchard's mm. uh, podcast, Something to Wrestle With. And they did a really great job on that. Um, but I'm anxious to see, you know, and it ruined like a that, lot of pushes because you know, that was a really, a really bad idea. Um, it did. It did. It ruined a lot, and espe- and even Bart Gunn. Which, if they just ended it at the end of the brawl for all with Bart Gunn winning, and didn't have him go up against Butterbean, you know that ruined his career. I mean that they did it ruined his push. It's like, and yep. it 
and they expose the fact that these guys are <laughs> professional wrestlers, not professional fighters. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so definitely Vice TV Tuesday nights at uh, nine o'clock. Uh, Tuesday nights at ten. Uh, definitely check it out. Dark Side of the Ring. And, Has uh, it been that long? I got to say, it's been at this wow, for an hour man. and a half hey, already. Time flies by. Uh, it has it's been 91 <laughs> minutes. So, it really does. And I want to thank you, Bubba, for coming on. Uh, so so uh, before I let you go, you know, give me give me some plugs for your podcast. Yeah, yeah, media absolutely. Where people can so, find uh, you. And so uh, you some can info. find us. Uh, so it's myself and, and one of my close friends, Troy Dane. Uh, we, we're just kicking back into season two and we talk about, uh, everything you need to know about football, wrestling, sports, life. And, and, uh, you can find us at the memory lane podcast. We're on Apple, um, Apple, Spotify, and, and each segment, uh, on every single episode, we actually take a trip down memory lane and talk about, uh, blast from the past. And, and you can also find me, uh, if we haven't talked to you, you're off enough. Uh, follow me up on Instagram at the real Cody Collins, um, not the fake one, the real one. So that's the uh, that's the best way to find me. And then uh, I also got Twitter as well. And uh, follow <laughs> me on Twitter. Always uh, tweeting out the funny Tiger King memes at I am Cody Collins. <laughs> All right. Well, Bubba Collins for the Memory Lane podcast. Thank you for joining me. It's been a great episode. We'll have to do it again sometime. Go over some more more uh, nostalgia wrestling or, you know, maybe when this COVID-19 crisis ends. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Uh, where sports uh, but in the up. meantime, stay safe. Uh, after this. And uh, it's been a pleasure. All right. Yeah, you too. You as well. Bye-bye. Absolutely. All right, folks. Uh, that was... Bubba Collins and I on the Sportswire long 90-minute episode. I want to thank him. You can find him on, of course, the Memory Lane podcast. And then you can follow me on Twitter at VAppsellSWE. You can follow Sportswire on Twitter and Instagram at Sportswire Audio. Um, working on Facebook. Not sure how good it's going to come out. But um, you can also email me, sportswireaudio at gmail.com. You can also uh, go to sportswireaudio.com. That brings you to our anchor.fm homepage uh, where you can find every episode of the Sportswire. And, of course, you can download Sportswire everywhere you find your favorite podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, everywhere. Just uh, d- just subscribe, leave us a five-star review, and I uh, hope you all have a great day. I will not record tonight or Thursday morning. I will record Friday morning. Okay, so have a great day, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Have a good day. See you later.